Jumbo, fellow adventurers, it's Mike Dooley. Thrilled to be with you here. Uh, we've got another Monday, best Monday of our lives so far, June 15th, 2020. Uh, time for a spiritual tune-up. And I'm answering one of the questions that was posed below on either Facebook or Instagram uh, not that long ago. If you have a question about applying spirituality in your life, whether it's creative visualization, invisible limiting beliefs, aliens, Bigfoot, you name it. Ask the question. The pyramids, uh, enlightenment, ESP. This is why I'm here, to bring some of these ideas into play and give you traction in your life to use them, to blast off, to have peace, to reveal your power. The question I'm answering now is probably one of the most common questions I have fielded speaking all over the world on the nature of reality. And of course, my tagline, the thrust of everything I share, is that our thoughts unfailingly become the things and events of our lives. Thoughts become things. Thoughts become things. End all, be all, no mitigating factors, not God, not demons, not karma. I've talked about all of this in my earlier spiritual tune-ups. Uh, the archive is below. Um, so, with that being my main thrust, people not only fear their own negativity, but I've established you're so inclined to succeed, you don't need to worry that you worry. Just do what you can to stop that negative train of fear and move forward. You're going to hit a home run. But here's the question. What about those bad influences in my life? What about those friends of mine who um, are always so pessimistic and always playing the ain't it awful game? Uh, what about my partner? I'm married to a person who thinks that I'm all rainbows and unicorns and they, they, they want me to get practical. Um, can other people, office politics comes up all the time. What about office politics? I want to soar with the eagles, but I'm surrounded by turkeys. How can my career blast off when there's so much negativity and my thoughts become things and they're influencing my thoughts and I, I feel like I'm doomed? This is the question. How or do other people's thoughts and negativity influence you and your manifestations? <clears throat> very little, very, virtually zero. You are Teflon. You are of God, by God, pure God. You are a gladiator of these jungles of time and space here to make them into a patio garden. You came fully equipped to transcend the illusions, to manipulate circumstances, to draw into your range of being people who would make you laugh, people who would make you cry happy tears, people who would inspire you, maybe some people who would challenge you. Uh, and oftentimes these people have so many great qualities, um, but they're not perfect. And maybe they have great qualities, they make you laugh, and, uh, but they, they, they're very pessimistic. Enjoy the good, don't worry about the bad. You are not vulnerable. You're not a victim. You can't be brought down and no one can stop you ever from living the life of your dreams. Okay, so don't worry that you're surrounded by turkeys. If you love them anyway, or if you're forced to be with them, make the best of it. See the divine behind their eyes. Hear it in their voice. Know that they're just afraid and that you can be a light to help them find some more positivity. On your own, do your creative visualization, have your vision boards, maintain some positivity, take baby steps, and they're all going to be talking about you around the, the water cooler in the office. Like, man, strength to strength keeps getting luckier and luckier. Must be nice. Thoughts become things and you knew it and you didn't worry that you worried. You didn't worry about the trash that they say. Even if they get you a little bit rattled and concerned and now you're thinking, about you know the economy and coronavirus because they were thinking about it ah you're still gonna crush it do your best to be positive five minutes a day will offset 18 hours of worry a day 
Five minutes of positivity, even if you fake it and self-doubt, will offset 18 hours of worry a day and you're good to go. Now, here's a really important nuance. If you're married to somebody, okay, and, and I trust that you really love them or you got to be with them for, for the kids or whatever, you're making the best of it. How does that work with thoughts becoming things? Whose thoughts become things? One of you wants to live in you know, California and the other one wants to live in Florida. You're only going to live in one place until you can buy two homes, right? So when it comes to details, okay, details, you're going to have to compromise, okay? What's good? What's not good? Would you rather force it and live in the state you want to live in if that means the, the, the end of your marriage and a broken home? Maybe you do, but maybe you don't, or maybe not yet. You got to make some choices in this world of contrast and delineation and have and have not and black and white and yes or no. You're going to have to do some compromising and do it for the details. And even which state you live in is a detail. Here's where you never do it, nor would any reasonable person expect you to do it. Your happiness, settle for nothing less. Wealth and abundance, settle for nothing less. Health, healing, recovery, settle for nothing less. Friends, laughter, joy, fulfillment, creativity, settle for nothing less. You can have that and no one would ever dream that it would be reasonable to take that away from you. Now, if you have an arrangement where your partner is the breadwinner and you are taking care of the children and keeping the house, and you say, I want to live in wealth and abundance, but my partner is afraid of life and needs to be, wants to be practical and doesn't have any big dreams, there is no reason, at least in the relatively near future, that you can't keep house, raise kids, write a book on the side, start a business on the side, have a part-time job on the side. Uh, there's times when you can't do that. There might be a, a one-year period or a 10-year period. We're talking about the rest of your life. You're going to have that time. It's going to show up again. The kids are going to be in school one day. So from nine to three, totally kick butt. You can do it. You can do it. J.K. Rowling did it. She's a stay-at-home mom. Now she's richer than the Queen of England. My mother did it. She was divorced, uh, terrified. Uh, we were saving bath water to water grass in the yard with buckets. It was bad. We wouldn't run the air conditioner in Florida. Um, she went out and got a secretarial job and was raising three kids and was writing a book in the evenings and the weekends after the kids went to bed. So yeah, it might be hard briefly, briefly, but overall, you can do it. So. Don't allow yourself to use your partner as an excuse to not move towards abundance, to not move towards fulfilling creativity, to not move. Yes, you have other priorities and you, you have to take care of those as well, but they're not mutually exclusive. Don't let those be excuses in your life. You can do it. Settle for nothing less than joy, friends, laughter, money, health, etc., Never compromise. Might not be this week. It might be next week. It might be in two years from now. But on all fronts of your life, you can be making amazing progress in the direction of the greatest life of your entire reincarnational tree. Okay? You're not vulnerable. You're all powerful. Your thoughts become things. And you will hit a home run. Compromise on the details. Settle for nothing less than happiness. Okay. You're not vulnerable. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the power of numbers. Okay, uh, masterminds, um, when, sh when you share a dream with somebody and, and what that can do for you. It Thanks for the comments below. Thanks for the smiley faces and the hearts. You have mine. Thanks for letting me do what I do. Um, and I look forward to doing it again tomorrow. Tally-ho and every best wish. Your thoughts become things and you are adored.